Well, in 2004, we had some researchers on our farm, and one of them was Alex Podolinski and a young um, gardener. And this young gardener, Stefan Funke, a biodynamic gardener from the northern part of Germany, can't believe that the soil quality on our wheat uh, field, the right one, but this, this part, was better than in his greenhouse. And we discussed a lot, a lot about um, application of preparates, um, crop rotations, and so on. He go back, um, can't sleep very well, um, read some books, and find some um, information about the, um, how the plants can pick up nutrients. And he find an experiment, he reproduce the experiment, and real, really, it works. Here in front, a salad with uh, a good supported soil with nutrients. In the back, this is a salad with pure sand, but with a, with a high quality mulch on the top. The next step was to realize that in his own greenhouse, He planted tomatoes, covered the surface with hay. Before he covered the surface, he applied the preparated 500 that the uh, preparates yesterday evening, Vincent Masson presented. And okay, then the tomatoes grow it. And the interesting thing was, after two weeks, that under, sorry, yeah, under the mulch established a lot of fine roots at the top of the soil, the border between the soil and the mulch, and there uh, the, the roots catch the nutrients. It's a completely different way um, uh, to, uh, to produce uh, vegetables and to um, that how the, uh, the plants can catch the nutrients. And the interesting thing was that with this, yeah, that with this kind of production, with no more usage of fertilizer. The tomatoes growing very constantly. They are completely healthy. From beginning of flowering, he apply, uh, applicate uh, silica uh, every four weeks. And now we, continu we continue and look how the tomatoes grow. The second of June, and sixth of June, twelfth of June, sixteenth, twenty second, twenty sixth. Sorry, I should continue. Sorry. Really fast. This one. Second. This one. You sure that the range is enough? Okay. Second. Well.
and end of uh, September. The interesting thing is that he produced between 10 and 13 kilos per square meters tomatoes without any um, diseases, no trouble with pests. And from the first step, it was a complete success. He also used this with other vegetables, not in the greenhouse, outside. And it worked very well. It was a complete success. He, take, uh, he put every week a soil sample, take it in the freezer, and in the winter he made the analysis. And the level of nitrogen in the soil was mostly 25 kilo per hectare diluted nitrogen. At less, it should be 100 kilo to produce such a kind of tomato. So here we have another way of nutrition, uh, supply of the soil, uh, of the plant. And well, since 2005, they do it every year, they change with winter crops on the, in the greenhouse and the results are every time the same. This is the last picture you see, end of September. This picture I have shown different farmers. Okay, a farmer is not a gardener, but one of these farmers picked up this idea, this inspiration, and said, okay, I have no vegetables, I have no tomatoes, but I have potatoes. How can I do? tomatoes. And probably you can see here you have a small area, 100 square meter. And on this 100 square meters, he yeah, he put hay on the surface immediately after planting the tomato as uh, potatoes. And we reached on this field, or visited this field, six weeks later, end of June. And look, this arc is 100 square meters, and you see the difference in the color. And when we look in the detail, then we see that the plants have a completely different expression. That was a consequence. Yeah, that was a consequence of this other way of um, support of the nutrients. But the most interesting thing was that if we now compare this kind of plants with the plants by side then we see should see yeah uh, under the mulch we, we we found the same kind of root fine root here who took the uh, take the nutrients and now we compare the plants in the mulch and you see healthy plant with a bright color and with no damage. The plant by side I should go step by step but the technic don't work as I want. The plant by side <coughs> at the border to the mulch have a darker color another expression <coughs> and there are some leaves are attacked by the loss of the potato beetle and the rest of the field was completely attacked with the potato beetle so this was a surprise what happened? One year, 
he needs to, to find a way to scale it, to, to bring it in a bigger scale. And uh, two years later, he started with an experience on a bigger scale. He put fresh, fresh um, grass clover on a field. The half was spread it out with the standard technique. Um, and that was a layer. And uh, the mulch layer was very humid and um, a high concentration of nutrients, especially with um, um, protein. That was the field directly after uh, application of the mulch. And by side, left and right, he don't mulch. And after a few days, you see the mulch starts start to drying and we see cracks because the volume reduces. And through these cracks, more and more growing are weeds, but only through these cracks. That was a mulch drying at the surface. In the underground, it was green, anyway. And, uh, but on the not covered surface part, the weeds grow everywhere. And, yeah, look, here is a crack. And this was a not covered surface three weeks after planting. And two weeks more. This was a covered surface. And this was a non-covered surface. He do nothing after planting and after applying the mulch. Then, at 21 of October, we take away the leaves, and harvesting was um, 7th, 7th of uh, October. The yield in the mulched air was 26 tons per hectare, accumulated per hectare. Uh, the yield by side was zero. The next surprise was that the storage quality of the potatoes were 100%. Absolutely no problem with um, uh, Phytophthora, with this with blight, with blight, simply health plants. And so uh, he, he see, well, we have problems, the quality of mulch, that's really a question we have to solve. And in the following year, you see here, he changed the, the, the mulch material. He used rye with wedge. He harvested directly from the field and put it on his potatoes. This was 2009. And this one, these are the potatoes nowadays. He plants the potatoes, put on the mulch, and the next is to take away the leaves and harvest the potatoes. This is organic farming. This is organic farming started with a biodynamic impulse. And it takes place more and more on hundreds of hectares in Germany, in Austria, and in Switzerland. This method is practicated in the meantime. And especially in this heavy years like this year, where the summer was very wet and uh, cold in a lot of areas. Um, the system brings a good yield and a good quality and the other potatoes had really big problems with the quality. This is one example. The next example is 
well, that is a biodynamic farmer in Alsace, in, in, uh, at the other side of the Rhine, in France, who, who have seen this and do it in the same way. We use uh, a standard technique. Yeah, it's a technique. Please don't write as I want. Um, okay, and now the second example is um, how to to bring this uh, knowledge about that sustainability is a system and not only um, um, a summary of, of single points we have to we have to know and we have to take a view on it. Um, it is a cultivation of maize because a lot of farmers, especially conventional farmers, ask how we can handle it with maize. It is one of our main crops and we need the solution. And now I want to show you um, how we do it with maize. You see a red clover. We change the red clover after, um, after uh, take away for silage or high. We make a very shallow minimum tillage. We cut the clover in two steps with uh, this technique. First, we cut the half. And in the second um, uh, work, we cut the whole surface. And it looks like that, the first work. And the, after we cut it completely, we seed uh, the corn in it. This is a uh, the, the tool for cutting completely. And, well, pro probably the technique. Can you, can you, um, uh, yes, because it, it doesn't work really good. Okay, look, so it looks after the cutting. It, it looks very rough, but it's, it, 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 was, it is with a system because this is a kind of compost on the surface. For this work, we applicate the P500P. You know, can the next one please? Okay. Then we seed in this rough surface our maize. The important thing is that we seed the maize in the untouched underground soil. Okay, next one please. And after seeding, it looks like that. Um, it's not really a fine picture, but it makes sense. I have not now enough time to explain, but every step is exactly uh, timed and, and um, we have a reason why we do it. Next one, please. After a few days with a rotary hoe, we make the surface equal and we uh, establish with this small seeder an uh, underseed. Okay, next one, please. Then we applicate the preparates. This is the application of um, uh, P501. Um, we spray with a, a small pickup. It's only an example how we do it. It wasn't that clear. Next one, please. And then, and that was really a, a, um, a great day for us. We had field days in September, and uh, a group of visitors stand in front of the field, and they don't know which one is a biodynamic and which one is a conventional. So what do you think? Which one is a biodynamic one? This one or this one? This one? This one is a biodynamic one. See, yeah, we have seeded it a bit later. But this is also part of the system. But it's a very homogeneous. Next one, please. Uh, yeah. And next one, please. Without words. Next one, please. This was the same maze uh, a, few, uh, a few days ago, 29th of uh, October. And next one. And next one. The important thing is we had a comp completely established underseed in the corn, uh, in the, in the maize. 
That means if we harvested some maize, we have a, a green bridge, we have living plant roots, and in combination with the BD500, we have a soil build-up process during the whole winter. That is one of the key points. Now the next one, please. And then we, during the, this field day, we make an uh, experiment. We simulated a rainfall of 150 millimeters. It rains at that day. The soil was already wet. And this was the result after 28 minutes. Next one, please. But that was a conventional field. And now you will be participate in real time. And Peter, it's time you must give me. 150 millimeters without words. No, no, not 20 minutes. <laughs> After that, I have only one question. Okay, next one, please. Two minutes, 20 seconds. And this was the soil after this 150 milli millimeters. Uh, okay, one, now the next, okay. And this was the soil, into, uh, into the soil, the, the structure. Next one, please. And this was the conventional soil by size. And now, the best was that one of the participants of this field day was a responsible person um, for water and erosion protection in, um, from the advertisory authorities, uh, region, regional uh, advertising authorities of Alsas. And after this demonstration, he asked us if we can make a one-year training with conventional farmers in the Alsace. And so, now we have the access, the contact to conventional farmers in Alsace. And that is exactly the way we have to go to reach the conventional, conventional farmers to bring biodynamic ahead. We have to create facts, hard facts, and that we can do with the right system, with perfect preparates, and with a, with a kind of communications um, conventional colleagues can understand. Thank you.